Good morning, gamers. What's up, guys? It is Wraithin here, back with another video on our April 14th Olympians meeting. This is the third meeting we've had uh, this year. Uh, quick reminder, these are things we are allowed to talk about, and just because something isn't in this video does not mean our priorities are screwed up or we haven't talked about it in the past. There's some stuff in the works that I'm not allowed to put in here. We may have also covered it in a previous meeting or in our Discord conversations. So if you have questions or comments and want to know why something hasn't been put into these videos, join our Discord, message us on Twitter. We'll either have answers about past topics or we can bring up something in the next meeting if it's truly unique. I'll put the Discord link in the description below. Quick overview of how these meetings work. Each individual goes through topics and issues that are driven by their own experiences or brought to them by their community. We are not mind readers. If you have an issue, let us know. A lot of this stuff we've already discussed. If you participate again in the Discord, you know we've got answers for a lot of things. These meetings can be pretty straightforward. We work with Titan Forge every day on these issues in our Discord, so some things don't make the list for the meeting because we actively discuss it all day. Uh, that said, I broke the video down into four categories uh, that came out of this meeting. General systems, item balance, conquest balance, and god balance. Let's get to it. First one up is general systems. With a quick update on the NA servers, there's been a lot of complaints about ping, crashes, latency, all that garbage. A lot of this is driven by internet conditions. Uh, right now, I actually used to work for a company that... Uh, did internet monitoring and the traffic right now is insane it's bringing down lots of games i actually did a video on how all this increased traffic is impacting the internet and why there's almost nothing you can do about it uh, if you want i'll uh, i'll link that as well below down in the description but high res is aware of this they're doing what they can to mitigate those problems uh so stay tuned there uh the second thing that was up was kind of the oce sentiment uh, the OCE guys reach out to us constantly. We're as responsive as we can be. Um, and they'd really love to have multi queue back. It seems like that's like the best suggestion is give us multi queue. Uh, but unfortunately the in-game tech does not support different queue types per region. It's just technically not possible based on the way that, um, you know, the game has been architected. Um, you know, one of the suggestions was make an indicator of the queue that most people are in, and they would love to hear feedback from more OCE players on their thoughts on potential solutions and what they want. I think ultimately at the end of the day, you know, maybe it makes sense to do something like restrict the number of queues available in OCE or uh, give players some sort of indication of where people are playing. It's obviously a lower population region. Uh, the easy answer is tell all your friends about Smite. Next up is Spectator and Ranked. Let us know if there are any issues uh, plaguing Spectator. We brought up that it's still broken. As detailed as possible with bug reports when you have Spectator issues, please. A lot of people just say, Spectator's broken, Spectator's broken. There's so many Spectator problems. It's very hard to fix that. These guys are awesome about bug fixing when they know where the issue is because they don't spend hours of time trying to find it. Please make sure when you guys report spectator bugs to us that you have as much information as possible. Video, what you were doing, everything. Next up is adventures. Uh, the community in general wants more information about them. Why uh, haven't we seen a new one recently? More transparency, what's going on with them? And believe it or not, they actually had a really low play rate and a really big drop off. Uh, even more so when they were brought back during last year's Odyssey. The philosophy now is that they want to spend these resources improving core game modes, fixing existing bugs instead of working on new adventures. You know, you, you get the argument from the community, stop making skins, work on bugs. Well, that, that doesn't really work because you can't have artists work on bug fixing. But this is definitely something where they're, they're not pursuing new expansive game modes like adventures in favor of working on smoothing out and fleshing out current um current core modes and current designs right this is a real uh translation of we're not doing new stuff because we want to make sure the old stuff is really stable next up was cross play ranked can we do it it's totally possible 100 percent. actually i think pretty much every person at titan forge is in favor of it because of the matchmaking uh positivity that came out of doing it for casuals the issue there is that the community is extremely divided. Uh, I put up a poll on Twitter not long ago. It had about 3,000 votes in it, 
and it was split almost exactly down the middle where 50% wanted it, the other 50% didn't, and the 50% that didn't was absolutely violent about it on my Twitter timeline. The people that don't want this really, really, really don't want this. And the unfortunate fact is, is you got a lot of elitists, you got a lot of platformists, I'm better than so-and-so, all the PlayStation kids feed in my games. Uh, You get a lot of that negativity and they just don't think the community is ready for it. We'll be continuing to monitor feedback on Crossplay Ranked. I'll put some more polls out and keep a pulse check on it. But for right now, they want to hold off on it and they want to keep as many people happy as possible. The interesting thing is, is you have a lot of people who say, well, over to half the community wants it or 51% think it's a good idea. Well, that means that you're going to annoy the hell out of 49%, which it's important to consider their feelings and thoughts as well. Look for more of an official post on why Titan Forge is hesitant to do crossplay ranked, what their thoughts and feelings are, and the community feedback that they've collected in addition to ours uh, at a later date. I think that'll be a blog post coming sometime in the next few weeks. Next up is this latest ranked split. Super high MMR and only 10 games. People feel like the grind was taken away because you can get the GM so quickly and then just squat and AFK there. Um, The system may be too heavily swayed towards first games in a split. Design's feedback on this was they've essentially removed the grind because of player feedback. Players historically disliked it more when no no one was in Masters until the last week of the whole split. Uh, They've seen that players just want to get to Masters and then play with and against their friends and well-known players for the rest of the split. They're going to look into MMR decay and a maximum MMR number. Unfortunately, MMR is a, is a mathematical equation, right? It is ranking you by how good you are, right? So, you know, if you lose to somebody who is number 5,000 and you're number three, you're going to lose a lot of MMR. If you win against somebody that's ranked much higher than you, you're going to gain a lot. If you're the best player in the world, why does it make any sense to give you any MMR when you're already the top rated one in the game? Next up was MMR decay for frozen accounts in GM. Possible solutions for the community. Scale with what rank you are. Higher ranks need to play more often to avoid decay. Uh, Design said they like this idea. Not sure if they can get it in for next split, but they'll look at it for uh, for the mid season. All right, next up was dual feedback. Dual is a uh, it's an interesting game mode with a lot of really hardcore fans. Um, some of the feedback that we gotten recently was that the amount of XP is fine. But what was nice about the older map was that with fewer camps, it was easier to keep control. Now it's pretty much impossible to control the game because the enemy can just farm and run. Uh, On top of that, there's a lot of PvE players that have popped up. It's a common play style just to completely avoid the other player and farm, steal Bull Demon King to push lane. Uh, This play style feels really cheesy. It's against the spirit of duel. Uh, design's going to actually look into this one. They know movement speed is kind of a challenge. Uh, I know Rexy put out a big video on Mercury and Poseidon in particular who have uh, heavy mo- movement speed stims and can kind of just zoom around the map and farm. They're going to take a peek at it, see if movement speed needs some adjustment and get back to uh, to the player base on that one. So keep an eye out for that. Contact your local Olympian if you're a big time dual player. Uh, Rexy, Sam, you guys know where to find me. Uh, hit me up. On top of that, respawn timers right now don't feel as good. Design's opening the uh, doors to changes to that um potentially scaling longer per death so you can't just w key somebody over and over and over and over again uh another idea was that consecutive deaths increase the timer getting a kill resets the timer so if you've died a whole bunch of times and you you managed to pick the other guy off uh your timer won't be as long just cool ideas that we've thought up to try and uh eliminate some of that that feels bad let us know what you guys think about Duel. We'd love to hear more feedback on it. These, again, these are things that we've brought up. This is nothing concrete. Design's going to look into it, and there's some other stuff here that we can't talk about. So um, just because this is the only feedback we've provided doesn't mean it's the only feedback they've got. So keep an eye out for changes on that one. Next up is items. First on the list is Purple Boots. Everybody thinks they're too strong, specifically on Sobek. Uh, It's kind of funny they made a small change and it's interesting to see how the community has flipped. The only addition really was the lifesteal. I know um, it had existed with more power for quite a while. Almost nobody bought it. You add just a little bit of lifesteal and everybody thinks they're OP. Looking at the stats though, Design said it doesn't seem like they need a nerf quite yet. They're pretty balanced uh, compared to cooldown boots. 
Next up was the Magical Lifesteal build meta that's starting to take shape. The majority of the pro builds had two lifesteal items of some kind, and they're worried about this getting out of control. It's kind of a struggle for players, especially on the low end with non-coordinated teams, as well as on the high end where you're forced into anti-heal build pass. Uh, designs feedback on this were mages were nerfed heavily across the board in season seven. Overall mage damage is way down. Uh, looks like players are mitigating this by building more lifesteal. Um, it's unlikely at this point that they're going to blanket nerf the lifesteal, buffing anti-heal in some way. Maybe the safer option here um, because there's also been requests to hit healers at the same time. In their next design meeting, they're going to uh, check this out, see what potential solutions are. But uh, I was in agreement with this point for sure. This can be super frustrating for newer players because nobody knows what the anti-heal items are to begin with or how much you need. Uh, and uh, I, I'm completely in agreement with this point. I think buffing anti-heal is a, a super safe thing to do at this point. Last up on the items list was hybrid items. Shout out to Inbound for blasting this all over social media that people are annoyed with this build path. Uh, the design reply was an interesting one. It seemed like at the beginning of the season that everybody was bitching about warriors and complaining that they were useless and then all of a sudden the hybrid items get a bit of a buff and uh now everybody's complaining about them uh they have seen the complaints discussed them with the balance team discussed them with some pros and they're actually not really compelled by the argument um there are two that they are considering looking into runic shield and jade empress crown um but they don't intend to just nerf warriors out of the gate they may look towards a mid-season change for a bigger warrior itemization positioning shift uh, so keep an eye out for that. Next up were some minor conquest balance changes. These were just general feedback things that, that we had heard, um, you know, that had were sort of prevalent, not necessarily uh, super prevalent. But the first one was, uh, can we carry two sentry wards, but they each take up a slot? Design's question back to us was, does this really solve anything? This would make ward battles even more annoying as hell. And if you didn't have two sentries, you basically lose vision. Um, not super compelled by this one. If you guys have any additional feedback or any other ideas around this, uh, we'd love to hear them. But this time, I think one century ward is probably where it's going to stay. The second piece is a quick one. Alpha harpies, uh, the Chad harpies over in the duo lane. People actually think these are too strong. Uh, designs actually heard this feedback. Um, they have some ideas around how they could uh, change this. But in general, the idea of the harpy being too strong isn't something that they want to mess with. Why do we want to nerf camps even further? They'd rather make the reward for clearing these harpies even greater to match the challenge instead of just nerfing how hard they are to kill. Keep an eye out again for that one. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, but they're aware of the issue. Next up, last up is gods and god changes. The first one was, can we nerf Uller's early game? He's way too oppressive in the early stages. Uller's on their radar. Uh, they discussed him in the last balance meeting. His stats globally are still pretty underwhelming. He's doing well in pro play, but uh, it's not something uh, that they're super compelled to change urgently. Next up is Mulan. Uh, this one is from Sacred XO slash Imogen. Uh, she's still getting complaints that Mulan is underwhelming even after the buff and buff announcement. Um, Design said that this was pretty much intended and this is where they thought it would be. Um, this buff was kind of a soft touch on their end to see where she landed. They wanted to go a safer route first before they look into other changes to her. And they're still open for heavier changes if feedback on Mulan continues. Uh, I played her recently. I personally think she's incredibly underwhelming, so I completely agree with this one. Let us know what you guys think. We know her ult feels bad, but going into animation, special effects changes or programming changes, those are pretty ha heavy handed. They take a lot of time. They don't take those very lightly. So if you've got other ways that you think that she could be buffed or nerfed, um, they're certainly open to hear it. Next up was an overall guardian rebalance pass. Buff some of the lower end ones, nerf some of the higher performing ones. Some buff candidates were Ymir, Ganesha, Kepri. Um, keep an eye out for a buff on the icy boy Ymir. Ganesh buffs are certainly reasonable. Probably nothing for Kepri. He's actually super OP. Nobody knows it. Uh, the god performs extremely well. Kabrakan, Terra, Athena are all other ones that design can look into. Next up in God Balance, people are annoyed with healers, specifically Afro and Hell. It seems like Chunga has not uh, risen in the ranks at all. 
and they definitely want nerfs for SPL picks like Horus, Persephone, Merlin, and Hun Bats. Pros generally agree with this statement, uh, and Design's reply was, no nerfs planned right away for Afro and Hell, and they kind of want to hold and get some community understanding of how strong they are. Uh, the larger audience still has not accepted them as good gods. They see them as mid-tier, though that's starting to change. Horus, on the other hand, is really bad across the board, except in SPL prioritization. I don't even think SPL win rate's very high. Uh, no nurse plan for him right now. He just got a buff, so it's super unusual to see them turn right around and immediately change that. Uh, they don't want to nerf gods into the ground just because of pro play. Hunbats and Merlin are safe nerf targets, so they're going to be looking into their numbers and how they might be able to shift them due to some community frustration. And they're also considering more Odin nerfs as well. And then lastly, and this one was kind of my point, please leave my junglers alone. It seems that for every three top end jungler nerfs, there's very few buffs uh, to the gods that are underperforming uh, or not doing well. I, you know, I, I said this a week ago, you nerf on bats, Pele is going to just show up more often. And she has, um, you know, even without the Hun Bats nerfs. And there's just going to be a new god that everybody complains about. I was kind of asking that design. Take a look at the lower end, the less played gods, the Bakasuras, the... I mean, even Mercury is not played that much. Um, and see if they can bring the bottom end up a little bit. Design's going to look into this. Uh, let me know in the comment section or on Twitter if you have specific jungling gods that you think would be good for this. Um, I know I've got my list, but again, I represent the community, not just my own opinion. So definitely let me know all right everyone that does it for me uh make sure you guys like and subscribe if you enjoy the video i'll keep doing these as often as i can especially after we have these uh olympian update uh meetings we have another conquest focus meeting with them today it's tuesday the 21st so i might be able to do another video but i think it's going to be a whole bunch of code red uh forward facing and mid-season patch uh, stuff so i'll let you guys know what i can but again this is just a quick update on the things that we did talk about please remember the disclaimers before you flame me on reddit or twitter that we didn't get to some item that you thought was important um and definitely join the discord if you haven't thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one